Welcome, and thanks for tuning in to our latest Manpower Group 2020 Workforce Analytics Update. I'm Raylene Gagnon, Vice President of Global Market Intelligence at Manpower Group Talent Solutions. My goal is to deliver the most important facts you need to know about what's happening in the labor market right now during COVID-19, along with what you need to consider as an employer to make the smartest decisions for your organization. In the past week, we've seen an additional 1.48 million jobless claims hit the United States. And what we've observed over time is that nationwide, unemployment has actually disproportionately impacted women and youth workers as a result of the virus. Because of that, many employers are focusing on a few key strategies, looking at creative ways to subsidize child care or create incentives and benefits related to child care coverage, a focus on increased shift flexibility, particularly those part-time strategies, in-office or return-to-office incentives that may benefit portions of the workforce, and also workforce retention programs, particularly around highly tenured employees. One of the things to note is despite the fact that there have been additional jobless claims, the total number of people who are currently receiving unemployment benefits has actually dropped to 19.5 million as employers have begun to re-engage their workforce and resume somewhat normal hiring patterns. Now, although part-time strategies at over 25% of all of the available jobs today continues to be a core strategy, there has been a reduction in temporary and contracted work as employers begin to shift to full-time and permanent hiring. In fact, 19% of current positions are actually contracted through staffing agencies, which is certainly down from the past few weeks that we've been monitoring this trend. From a remote deployment standpoint, currently 16.4% of all the jobs available do not specify a location, again, indicating that there's a long-term commitment to those roles being deployed remotely moving forward. One last thing as a result of some of the challenges that continue to be represented in the marketplace as employers begin to rehire is that there's an emerging practice of mapping and identifying skills within the business today to identify resources who can be upskilled in order to manage cost of hiring outside for key roles, particularly around the more experienced members within the workforce at the moment. Speaking of the experience levels within the workforce, there's been a shift in demand. So if we compare the jobs that represented the greatest portion of hiring demand in April versus where we sit today in June, there's definitely been a shift. Medical and health jobs, operations and logistic jobs, they both represented nearly 20% of the workforce and hiring demand at each, respectively, in the April timeframe. And now they're both down to 13.6% of the total jobs available, respectively. Retail has shifted a bit, but it's important to note a difference here because while it represented a little over 17% of all hiring activity in April and has actually increased to nearly 19% today, it's actually more of a shift than you might realize because in April that was driven almost exclusively by grocery and pharmacy jobs, whereas today that 18.8% actually represents all hiring activity as markets have begun to resume across the retail industry. Admin, clerical, and many of the supporting roles that were essential during the course of the pandemic have begun to decline drastically. At 14% in April, they're down to just over 6% today. And IT has remained steady, although declined just a bit in response to the surge in general hiring activity that we've seen. And it's gone from 9.4% to just under 8% of total jobs. And with finance, it's remained steady going back and forth between 4 and 5% throughout the course of the past few months, right now sitting at 4.3%. Hospitality, though, is finally on the rise, as for a long time it was sitting at zero to less than 1%, and now is nearing 8% of total hiring activity. One last view to look at is the industry view, and as we look across the board, we've certainly seen some ongoing shift, but one of the things that has drastically changed in the past few months is that increase to accommodation and food services from an industry standpoint sitting at 7% of all the hiring activity, our professional skills, scientific and technical jobs still sitting at 6%, manufacturing steady at 4%, and a rise in educational services as markets and organizations, not only from an education standpoint, point, but a training perspective, begin to really invest and focus on what that new future will look like. So a number of changes have occurred, and we will continue to monitor the markets and workforce trends daily. I'll come back to you next week with the latest, so stay tuned, and until then, stay safe.